So welcome to the uh, post-match iTech interview. I'm joined by um, a somewhat disappointed Alan Paves. Um, give us a breakdown and just a, a summary of what you thought of how the game went today. Which was a very tough day at the office. It was. I, I, th I think it was a continuation of the error uh, that we took in at Doncaster and, and today was just a, another example of that we were we, we were subject to our own error and our own pressure. Um, I've got to say full respect to Ealing because they capitalised on that and then late in the second half um, they put us under enormous pressure and took their opportunities but I think especially first half and early second half we, we've got to say that we were our own worst enemy. Accuracy was a big thing, uh, they, they Ealing capitalised on that accuracy when they were in R22 they applied a massive amount of pressure and ultimately came away with six tries. We had a couple of ventures into their 22, but ultimately it was that, you know, a couple of key decisions that didn't go our way. Was it, would you say that was telling? Absolutely, like we couldn't launch off the line out effectively. The scrum didn't function as we wanted it. And we spent the majority of our time uh, camped in the 22. I mean, in the first half, having the advantage of the, of the wind, we did pretty well to limit the amount of goals that they had. But second half, to have that element behind your back and spend the best part of half a game in your 22 is criminal. And we've got to ask ourselves, why, why did that happen? What was, it, what was our game plan at that point? Why have two pick and goals just outside your 22 when we've just scored by putting the ball up in the air? Then we've got to ask these tough questions. Why, why was that? What were we thinking at that point? Talk to me about the scrums. You're, you're a scrum connoisseur. Um, from the commentary box, to me and Murray, it was, it was a head to, it was a heads or tails job for the ref. He, no ball went in and came out cleanly. There was no launch for the backs. W what was going on there to the, you know, the, the layman? What was the crack? Look, before the game, referee stated that he was not going to have a messy scrum. He was going to give penalties away. Fair enough. I think early on we lost our feet and they got their deserved penalties off that. I'm not saying that they didn't deserve that. Later on, I think it was tit for tat. Referee was giving one this way, one that way. He, he, he refereed it how he saw it and I respect him for that. Uh, so I, I think they got what they deserved and the few penalties that we generated and a bit of platform that we got, which was very little, we deserved. So I think he refed it fairly. Lineouts again, another another massive launch weapon uh, for the Pirates, which has been something that you guys have been particularly well in. It just didn't function today. It's easy to blame the hooker, it's easy to blame the jumper. There's so many factors involved that have to come together for a lineout to work. But there was just it just wasn't there today, was it? No, the the message at half time. We we normally go for high value areas because obviously the attack coach wants us to be able to win that ball in a certain area and deliver it how we want. So we said at uh, half time, um, look. We'll go ball winning and we'll just deliver it how we feel we're going to give our, ourselves the best opportunity just to retain the ball. But as you can see, they struggled, we struggled late in the second half. It got even worse for us, okay, and, and it didn't. We couldn't give ourselves any kind of platform to sustain any kind of pressure. Right now, obviously, emotion, emotion from me, so I need to look at that and look at why did it break down? Was it as bad as we thought? Okay, and what can we take into next week and make sure that we eradicate that error? I was saying um, before the game, it's almost a shame that you have to pick a team before you go for the heads or tails because we look at the selection. The first half condition suited having someone like Roger Davis at nine. Um, we opted to go for Schwartz and that just, there's no right or wrong answers and I appreciate the pressures when it comes to selection, but what was the, the game plan behind that? Because the first half suited Rodri, that high tempo sniping, bit of go forward, and the second half when you had the conditions and you had the wind behind you, that would have suited Schwartz that a little bit better. So what was the kind of thinking on that selection side of things? So I think it's interesting you ask that question. I mean, the nines selection full stop was, was a tough call this week. Um, JB coming off the back of Doncaster didn't kick to his potential. Um, we felt Schwarzy in the pre-season had pushed himself into a position where he deserved a go. We've got to ask ourselves though, as coaches, was our selection in that in that position was it right? Did we did we get it right? We will ask that question, and I imagine there'll be a bit of a blaze up about that 
but we do feel that whatever nine we put on that pitch has to be adaptable to the conditions. Early doors, Schwarzy puts one, he skies it, okay, he's capable of kicking into that, he's got triple length, there's not a lot of pressure on him. So we've got to ask the question, why did you take the extra build? Okay, so right, when we when we hit up, we got we get triple length, no pressure on you can kick his trajectory can be that much flatter. flatter. Yeah, for length. So we've got to ask, why did you take another build which took you infield? That means we're more disorientated, and at that point he skies it. You don't get many goals into this, so choices are you run it, okay, try and take momentum because it's too heavy to kick into, or you're super pragmatic and you've got to get the trajectory right. He didn't, mm. and we didn't get many goals at that. So, yeah, it's. Um, I think it's more of a management issue how we manage the win both sides yeah and we need to look a little closely at that i mean ultimately another selection query for us was the it's the same same philosophy really you've got john stevens who in my opinion is is a dog you know he'll put his head where people shouldn't put their heads and although kiri kiri has that and he has the ability to do so i want to see him in space and running through gaps and the second half would have suited him more and john stevens is the kind of guy that i i personally I don't get paid the big bucks to pick these teams, and I fully understand that. Um, but it's just, you know, in regards to that section again, you've got a very competitive back row. And what, you know, how is it for we you guys when it up, comes to it? We picked on form. Yeah. So John and Antonio are like this at the moment, and they both offer us two different ways of playing. So Antonio gives you more breakdown, more turnover, more offload. John is going to give you more dominance in the shot, okay, and he runs good lines, so he runs more direct good lines, and he's also, his super strength is in the air. So we just said, go both play, and we'll pick you on who's performing the best. In the second half, when we brought uh, Antonio on, he performed at a higher level with his skill set than John did starting, vice versa today. We brought John on and we felt that he, he gave us a level of physicality. So, like the nines, like the back row, we've tried to select on form within training and within games. And we've got to be adaptable to what we're faced because we can't choose the elements after, after selection. No. We can't go, okay, so you suit this and you suit that. We've just got to go with what we've got and roll. Absolutely. I mean, to be fair, it's a testament to you guys as coaches that you you create the environment where you have opportunity. Um, obviously, hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? It's all in a good standing here after a game saying, oh, why didn't you play so-and-so? The wind was in your face and, you know, he's more dominant. But um, as I said, it, yeah, it's easy to ask these questions from no, me. No, but, but I think they're good questions to ask. Yeah. Those, those are critical positions. And, and I think those are the questions. Why did you go with that nine combination? Why did you not go with John in the, in the back row? I think that those are great questions to ask because those are the questions that we're asking internally, yeah. you know, uh, and saying, did we get selection right? Was it was it right? Was the combination of the back row right? Was the com was the configuration of the nines going into this game was it was it really what we needed? And we'll go back and we'll reflect on them. So I think what you're asking me now. He's only right. So if you're if, you, if you're a supporter of the Pirates, you know I, I'd want to know why the selection was that. More importantly, how's Luke Scully? Looked like a nasty knock. I mean, when he goes down, he goes down uh, hard. That kid, doesn't he? Yeah, and I mean, he's just come off the off the back of a really big bang, and 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 he was all right with his shoulder. He, a couple of weeks, he recovered. He looked bad. But looking at his ankle or his knee, I'm not sure we're going to have to go in and now get the full report, but he looks sore. I'm, touch wood, he's like his shoulder. He looked bad and he yeah. got away with it. So let's see if he can get away with this with his knee or his ankle. Because he's a good lad, he goes in hard. I, 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 he's a tough Welsh lad. Welsh, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, and I do, I do <laughs> love the Welsh. Uh, and he, he's, a, he's a bloody good lad. So touch wood, he's, he's all right. But um, he looked sore when he went off. Final question for you. Where, where do we go from here? Obviously, we've got to win. It's a, it's a, it's a tough loss, and yeah. you've almost lost control of the league. Yeah. Um, in regards to, it's no longer in your hands. 
what, what, you, what are your anticipations and aims for the rest of the season? Okay, so we, uh, first and foremost, we've got to win and we've got to win with bonus points. We've got to max out because it's not in our control. The only thing we control now is the performance we put on the pitch. We're going to have to look at uh, different combinations. We're going to have to look at how we regain some form because after the Saris game, we've just waned off. And that's inaccuracy and skill level and you know so we've got to look at different combinations trying to get the a little bit of spark back in what we're doing we've got to win as well and we've got to look at next year as well so we've got to get the balance right but ultimately we said going into this year it was about winning so we're going to put what we feel the strongest side is on, on that pitch but also we need to look at getting the energy back into the side Fair enough. Well, mate, I, I do appreciate you. It must be tough, obviously, after a loss like that, coming out and having to, to talk about it when it's still fresh. And I know you're a very emotional character, which makes you such a good coach. But thank you very much for your time. Um, I'll leave you get back to uh, having a, a commiseration beer with the boys. No, no. Um, thanks for joining us for the uh, post-match iTech interview. And uh, we'll see you next home game. Thank you.